And uh, see, see, we all have a mutual agreement here. We're gonna eat. All right, let's go ahead, bro. Father, we thank you so much that we're here. You have something you want to feed us on spiritually, not just food, regular food, but you'll get there too as well. <coughs> Help us, Daddy, to see what you got. Holy Spirit, we know you're here. We ask you to unveil our eyes and our hearts and minds to see on Jesus. We know that you're going to will us closer to you. And we thank you so much for that. And help change us, make us better people going out than where we come in. And allow that relationship to take hold stronger than what it was before we gathered this morning. Let it be our centerpiece of our lives today with Daddy. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, just have fun. That's all we ask, just have fun. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Woo! Yes, I'm, I'm all into this now. Alright, so today we're going to talk about wooing us closer. Wooing us closer. <coughs> I think it's a perfect because the way we left off last week, we learned about what, what it meant to follow Jesus, right? What it meant is that you accompany him into relationship with Dad. That's what it is. And what springs out of that is all these works. We have always confused it with works, right? Work, 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 and stay in relationship. And from that, the good works happen. Otherwise, it's just dead works, right? So today, we're going to talk about something here. <coughs> we're going to have fun I know, I, ha- I actually had to search this morning to find myself a paper Bible. Did you know that? I have so many electronic Bibles and apps and this stuff that I literally had to dig for a Bible, and I actually got a paper one. How about that? Woohoo! And I did this on purpose because I didn't want to put my tablet in my hand because, you know, my tablet's pretty huge. And I have my phone in my hand where people think I'm sitting here texting and stuff. You know, it's just, just break down the wall, right? <coughs> How do we use this? Is my question for you today. How do we use this, this, this thing that has paper and has words on it? How do we use it in our lives? <coughs> because... I've, I've seen us as a body, I'm not talking about us, but as a general, use this for numer- numerous reasons, right? Numerous cases. Now, I've never went to Bible school, so you can have fun with that. Never, thank God, actually, I actually very thankful for it, because in my journey, I, I didn't have, I didn't need to go. I needed him, right? <laughs> but, how often do we use this, this book to go in and find our problems, find a solution to our problems? Because I, I, I don't know about you, we, we spend a lot of time on Facebook, and we go in there, and you see, you see pictures pulled up, and they say, well, you know, the hotline numbers go here to these, this scripture, to this scripture, to this verse, and this line, and you can find your problems, solutions to your problems. And how many times when we have a problem, we go straight to this, and we start searching? Don't we? So you we put our head right into the book, and we look, right? Or how often, when we see a, a bad situation, come up, rise up. We go right in there to see if it was right or it was wrong. Well, how often do we use this book to hit people in the head with? I see that so often. I don't know about you. I do. It's almost as if we worship this more than we worship him. Let's be real. Who is the first thing you turn to? We usually turn to this and we're like, what's the word of God? We're going to talk about that. Because I, 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 my prayer is for us to see this differently. Because this is an awesome book. It's an awesome book. The best book ever written. Yes. If it's used to the way it's supposed to be used. Amen. And not to hit people over it. And, and you know what? If, you're, if you've been hit by this book, by someone, then by, I want to say right now, I'm sorry. I am absolutely sorry. Is it hurt? I've been hit with it too, and I've actually used this to hit somebody. Not just a, someone, but people. And I'm at fault too. And if we're one by, we can apologize for other people because we still love them, and we're still connected to them. And we can apologize for them too. Right? So I, I'm officially saying, I'm sorry. It hurts. It doesn't correct us, it actually scares us away. Don't it? Let me ask you how many times you went in the Bible and looked for your problem to find a solution for it. How often did that solution actually manifest itself? Be real. 
how many times have you confessed that you're healed that you still have a sickness and disease going on in your life? And you start to doubt what's really here. Or that you have you have prosperity thinking and and then you start to think that financially I'm supposed to be here, but yeah, I keep confessing the word and there's no happening. It happens so much, so much. I've been there too. We've all been there. Some of us are still going through it today. Maybe we don't see what it really means. And what it sees, that it's actually a book that's designed for the purpose to woo us closer to him. That we may have a relationship with him and not with us in the process, in that thinking. Then am I sitting here today? I want to say, stop reading this. No, I want you to read every day. I want you to. My desire is for you to read every day, even myself, but see it differently. See that it's a love story written to you. To draw you closer to him. So that you may know him. That your first thing happens in your life, you say, Daddy, I need help. You cry out, I need help. That we don't go in there, we look like doctors, prescriptions, find the right prescription for each of us. Say, so Daddy, I might have cancer, but my cancer is unique individual to me that I need your help. Because what draws us, what keeps us going for him? When we think there's something else that we have to go through to get to him. When we have him living right inside of us. Each and every one of us. I want us to see that this is a book of wooing. Not of hatred, not of prescriptions, but of love. Because I think that's what's going to be interesting today. Because Jesus didn't say, I'm going to send you a book for you to have. He said, I'm going to send you a comfort. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit to live in you. I'm going to have him dwell with you forever. My down payment to what's to come. The promise. I'm going to give you the promise. Not something that's down in the ladder back. But something that's by him. So I want to look at that today. Because I'm going to start here. I have to kind of go around Round it. But I want, you, I want you to kind of see this. We're going to start in John 5 because Jesus is in the middle of talking to the Pharisees and scribes. And this is written there <clears throat> for us. And he's, he's talking to them. And he starts talking about the Father. Man, did you know something? That, that in the Gospel of John, he mentions that it's supposed to portray Jesus as God. Yet, it's meant the, word, the name Father is mentioned the most in any other God. Because they're all one with each other. One. On one accord, one walk, one doing, everything's one accord. So check this out. It says John, it's talking about John the Baptist. Was the lamp that was kept on burning shine to show you the way? And you were willing for a while to delight yourselves in his light. But I have as my witness something greater than that of John. For the works that the Father has pointed me to accomplish and finish, the very same works that I'm doing are witness proof that the Father has sent me. Right? And the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. Not one of you has ever given ear to his voice, his form. You have always been deaf to his voice and blind to the vision of him. You have not, you have not his word living in your hearts because you do not believe in me. Or the one who he who is sent. This is why you do not keep his message living in you, because you do not believe in the messenger whom he has sent. Now he's sitting here talking to these guys, these Pharisees and scribes. They don't know who he is. They didn't think he's just another man, right? But he's getting ready to say something to them because there's something that they end up doing. He says, "You search, investigate, and pour over the scriptures diligently. They're constantly." And, he, and, and I want you to know something. In the Greek, the word "scripture" always refers to the Old. The Torah, the Old Testament, whatever you want to call it, it's always referring to the old. He says, y'all search diligently, every day, looking at the scriptures. Because you suppose and trust that you have eternal life through them. He says, you look at this bo your books, you look at the Torah so much, yet you think that gives you life. I love this next part. And these very scriptures testify about me. Me, he says. They refer to me. And you still are not willing to come to me so that you might have life. Wow. What is he saying? He says, they look at it thinking that 
what they read is going to give them life, yet it all points to him. Relationship. That the him, he gives life. Wow. Now check this out. And then I, I looked at this because I start. this is one part of my, in my journey. I'm going to talk about my journey a lot. But when I started to see this, it started to, whoa. I started having those whoa moments on me, right? I started to, like, God was starting to speak to me. My daddy was, began to speak to me to pull me to him. Because I, I use this book so much to look up stuff. I have problems. I have books that say, go to this chapter if you have this problem. Or if you have this, then go to this and this and this. And I use it like crazy. And I never saw him. I was always just going to words on paper instead of him. I found it to be quite interesting. And then when I, he got me, and when this came up, he then referred me. I'm, I'm actually taking you on a journey that, dad, that daddy took me on today. And I, I kind of hope it helps you too as well. John 1. John 1 verse 1. It says, In the beginning, before all time, was the word... And the Word was God. And the Word was God himself, right? He's saying the Word was him, was God. God is his Word. Isn't that funny? He is himself the Word. Now, this is actually a reference to the Genesis 1, right? And he's, it's because John is writing to show us that Jesus is God, right? And so a lot of this stuff is referring to what happened in Genesis. But notice this. He was present originally with God, and all things were made and came into existence through him, and without him was not even one thing made that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. So he's saying, God said, we know, light be. Right? He's referring to Jesus. He actually starts talking about the word light and what it refers to. He's actually referring to God himself. And so what he's saying, he's saying that the word was Jesus. And that Jesus gave life to everything. All creation came out of who? Jesus. Hence why it all points back to him. Right? I was joking with my wife the other day. I was like, well, you know, instead of a Pokemon Go app, why don't we create the app that says everything points to you? You can look at it through a filter and see how everything points back to him. And she just laughed and said, you're so corny. I was like, yes, baby, I'm cornier than cornflakes, right? <laughs> Right? I don't care. Make be coin. I don't care, right? I like to have fun because my guy is a creator of fun. When it's used in its proper text, right? But notice this, we get stuck here, right? We don't read what happens down in chapter in verse 14. It says the word became flesh. The word became flesh. It is now manifested before us. No longer you have to try to find in a sense, find and try to get life out of these words, he's already here. Wow. He is here now. <clears throat> in tabernacle among us. Woo! That right there is a good Hebrew word. It means to he pitched a tent over us. He is with us in flesh, face to face. You can touch God now. He is here. Just come to him and you have life. Right? And we saw, we actually saw his glory. He's talking to John. John is referring to him the, in the saints. You come up here? Yeah, it's about to end Alright. Such glory as on begotten son receives from his father. I love this part. You know what the glory that he received? You know what glory Jesus received from the father? Red? Full of grace and truth. What a way to give your son. Is to give grace and truth, which they and there means it's one and the same. It's referring to him as one, like Jack and Jill. Right? It's all coming together as one. What a way to give your son. But he's saying, look, guys, it's funny how the Holy Spirit's trying to get us and say, He's here now. Go to him. These points, these, this, what I have written have inspired others to write. It's all reference to him who is now here. 
Didn't they write about the virgin birth? Didn't they write about it all? Didn't they write about what he was going to do on the cross? Didn't they write about it all? Yes. I think it's funny is that it's actually, it comes alive when you start to see that he's already here. And now God is trying to drive you to him. There's a reason why he wants to bring you to Jesus. Because Jesus is a picture of the Father's love for you. And that when you understand that portion of it, that he's not out to beat you up. Yeah, he's come, he comes back as a lion, but not for you, any of you. He wants you to see Jesus and come to Jesus, through Jesus, accompany Jesus. Because if you don't, you're always going to think there's a wall between you and the Father. And Jesus represents no wall. Come freely to Daddy. You, and you're probably in your mistakes. You can freely now come to daddy because you see the son, you accompany the son, and you're good. You got daddy. I don't think I covered that thing up good enough. <coughs> yeah, it's a phone, baby. She is so smart. And she likes to tell everybody. You know what's the funny part? When, when there's a storm and it starts to storm, and she goes, daddy, daddy, daddy. I love it. Isn't that a picture of us? Daddy, daddy. It's storming. Yes, baby, once you want a hug, she always comes. Right. <laughs> it's okay, baby. You want to come in? Yeah, you silly. Shouldn't have gave her the nap. But I want you to show her something because I'm, I'm going to keep things going because this is a journey that I had. Because did you know that Jesus actually referred to the scriptures himself? He always talked about it. He said, I'm going to do this because it's written so that it be manifested before your eyes. But then after he, after he had been resurrected from the grave, he started talking about the scriptures even more. He started to put to tell us what the scriptures actually mean. I'm going to go back on this road of Emmaus. <coughs> road of Emmaus. Have you been down the road? It's a seven mile journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus, right? These two disciples, we only know one of them, Cleopas. If I say it right, good. If I say it wrong, Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your correction. <laughs> Helping everybody else to understand. Two disciples walk in to Emmaus, and they are in despair. They are so upset because, you know what, their whole life has been wrecked. Because they centered the rest of their life on this Jesus who has died and is buried in the grave. And, and some crazy ladies are saying that he's no longer there, right? And they're absolutely upset, and Jesus comes on the scene. And he hides himself. He hides himself from them. Because he wants to be revealed. Mommy, he, wants. Mommy, mommy, mommy. <laughs> he wants to reveal himself in a certain way so that they will know it's him. They, they can see not with physical eyes, but with the heart. Him. So they, they, he allows them. He says, tell me about your pain. What's going on? I don't know what's going on yet. He does. But talk to me about it. And they start talking about it. So we pick up here in Luke 24 and 23, and he says, but, he's talking about the women, but then they find his body, and they return saying that they hadn't even seen that vision of an angel who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb, and they found it just as the women had said. But him, they did not see, right? Everything was clear. They're like, oh, he's not there. Man, our whole lives are getting wrecked here, man. We don't even know what to do about the future, man. We got stupid Rome all over us, man. We can't even do stuff. We thought we were going to be free. Jerusalem, Israel would be back on the map, baby. And we're just now squashed still, right? And Jesus said to them, oh, foolish ones. Or not in the sense that we use the word foolish. He's saying, he's telling them, you're slow to understand. You're slow to perceive. You're slow to see it, but you can't see it with your own eyes. In the sense, he's telling them, you can't see it because I haven't revealed it. Did you know it takes God to reveal himself? Yet we go to theology school, which means study of God, man's study of God. Yet we try to know him ourselves. It takes him to reveal himself to us, for us to know him. It takes him to help us to believe in our hearts. It helps, it, it, it's him who allows us to believe in our heads, too. It takes him. Man. It's so hard to believe. Everything that the prophets have spoken. 
He's like, I'm getting ready to tell you something. I'm getting ready to set you free. I'm getting ready to reveal myself in a way that will release you from the rest of your life. Because if you keep looking back at the scriptures, I think you can get they gave you life. All over this part, right? Was it not necessary and essential thing that Christ should suffer all these things before it entered into his glory? Hadar. I love the, I love the word the Hadar. It's the Hebrew word for it. Then beginning with Moses and through all the prophets, he went on explaining and interpreting them to this to them. In all, the, in all of the scriptures, thanks concerning referring to himself. He started talking about himself. Wow. Yet, how often have you heard this thing? We all get different interpretations of what we read. How is that so? When he himself says, it's me. All about me. It's me hidden in all of it to show what I was going to do to set you free, to show the love that God the Father has for each and every one of you. That he has put together the perfect plan to set you free from your own disaster. Wow. Let me, let me give you some reference there. Go, go look at the Bible. When Abraham was called, when God said to Abraham, give your son, the only son whom you love, sacrifice him. And you see him put wood on the back of Isaac. And the father and the son go up the hill. Who is that picture? The father and Jesus with Jesus carrying the cross. That means what? The father and the son were together on the cross the whole entire time. Because Abraham and his son were there. It's a reflection of Jesus, what he was getting ready to do. And the father, too, accompanying together as one. Or you had David slinging the sling, the one stone. Against Goliath. Who's that picture of? The beloved. Who's that? Jesus. Or Solomon sitting on his throne, reigning with all everything. It's a picture of Jesus as he sits now. These pictures, or as Joseph. Have you ever looked at the story of Joseph? Doesn't it remind you of somebody we know? Jesus? Who was betrayed by his brother and wasn't it his own? Jewish brethren who betrayed him. We don't have any other king but Caesar. Thrown into a pit. Sold into slavery. Cast to the Gentile world. Hidden. But always comes up. With the Gentiles. Wasn't the gospel go out to the Gentiles? And when his brethren, this is a picture of him when the brethren come back. When the Jews, all of them, see him for who he is. Not with a hammer, but with open arms. Yeah, come close. With all his power, he uses it to woo us closer. He's never trying to drive away his friends. Go look at it. You got Hosea and Gomer. That's a picture of Jesus and the bride, his church. Him coming to get her. No matter what she did and how dirty she was, he went and bought her back. Go look at it. I, I, I wish I was on this journey. I mean, part of me wishes I was there. But guess what? I have it today because I got the Holy Spirit in me. But to listen to him just talk about himself, unveiling him, going through every element in, the, in Moses' tabernacle, talking about how it referred to him, and what he was going to represent on the cross and for us today and forevermore. It's all referring to back to him. You just see, sometimes we just see stories. But we need him to show us him. Now watch this. So he's revealing himself. He says, it's all about me. Check what happens to him. And we think that somehow we got to sit here and read, read this Bible to find out what we need to be doing, what we not need to be doing, and try to go there. Watch this. And he, we take this and says, get away from your sin. Because it it's a sin in the Bible. It's a sin in your life. And we're whacking people. Now, get closer to God. And I just did it. Jesus used the Bible to refer to himself. Were they sinning? Yes, because they were in unbelief, weren't they? They did not believe what they had been reading. 1 
first ones into the lake of fire are the ones unbelievers, unbelieving, the doubt. Right? So they were in sin. Did he hit them? No. He wooed them. Watch this. Let me start there. Oh, yeah. I was hoping that it didn't click. It says, then they drew near. We see a village. But Jesus sees them coming closer to him. They came to Emmaus. But they were drawn closer to him. To the village which they were going. And he acted as if he would keep on going. Jesus said, I'm going to keep going. Boop, boop, boop. Right? Y'all have a nice day. You're going here. I'm, I'm going to keep on going. Check this out. But they urged and insisted, saying to him, remain with us. And the Greek, they grabbed him and said, you're not going anywhere, baby. You're going to stay with us. You're going to stay right where, wherever we are. You're going to be there. For it was toward even the day is not far spent. So he went and stayed with them. And that went was not something as, oh, they're, they're forcing me. It was a willingness. Like an excitement that they want me. Look at that. They didn't even want him to leave. Yet we use this book to beat people up and think that's going to draw them near. Yeah. If they see Jesus... They're going to know what the Father did and planned and put together and put into place and manifested so they will draw near to him. Because check out this. Go a couple of verses down. It says, when their eyes went to him, he broke the bread. They had communion. And when the bread was broken, man, that speaks on its own. When he had broke the bread, when Jesus was manifested and crucified, knows that there is now no barrier between you and him. Between you and daddy, their eyes are now open. Their eyes were instantly open, and they clearly recognized him. And he vanished. I love the next part. And they said to one another, Were not our heart greatly moved and burning? Notice the word heart is singular. If I use the word our, refers to multiple I have to use the word hearts because it's plural. But in the Greek, it is singular. Referring to what? Oneness amongst them. How? By them forcing themselves to be together? By seeing him together. Within us, while he was talking with us on the road, and he was open and explained to us, you want a generation who's on fire, God, why don't you just present Jesus? And let them draw near. Allow that love to woo them in. And their heart will burn. And this is going to burn. Have you ever had that first love? Do you remember when you first met somebody and they, they just did all this wooing to you? And your heart started to melt inside. It felt like, felt like there was a burning sensation. Don't you get that when you see Jesus? Funny how that happens, how that starts to become a reflection of what he does for you. But it's so much greater, isn't it? It starts, it starts to burn. Because now you're standing up seeing him, and you want, you're drawing closer and closer to him. <clears throat> and notice this too. He then goes back to The story doesn't stop here, though. Because these guys, or man and woman, we don't know. We always assume it's two guys. There was women who followed Jesus, too. They ran back seven miles. Have you ran seven miles? You just walked seven miles. Now you got to run back seven miles? And they go to the disciples. With the disciples up the chamber, locked up for fear of the Jews. They were in sin. They were not believing. One of the first ones in is the fearful. Isn't it? Look at it. Read Revelation. One of the first ones in is the fearful. Yeah. And they said, He's alive! He so appeared with the him too! He's alive! And then Jesus just appears. He appears, right? He says, Look at my hands, look at my feet. We also know he was on them. He 
breathe on. But they were scared, though. They were still scared. Because they thought he was kind of a ghost. He already knew that without them even saying that. And he would start talking to them. He started saying, hey, give me some food to eat. Because not, a ghost cannot eat. And, and a ghost cannot be touched. But you can touch and let me eat for you, right? And then verse 4, he, then he said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything which is written concerning me and the law of Moses, the prophets. Oh, did you know the Psalms about him too? Yeah, we just think, we think these people just singing to God. There's actually revelation. There's actually Jesus hidden there throughout. For an example, Psalm 22 is all about him on the cross. Psalm 23 is about him reigning right now. And Psalm 24 is about him when we get to be raptured out and be with him forever. Face to face. It's funny. Yet we just see David just singing. Maybe David didn't know what he was right. Maybe he did. He was excited about sharing his journey with all of us to inspire us to see him and come closer to him. We'll, we may never, we'll never know on this side of heaven. But we can ask him when we see him. It's beautiful, isn't it? Now notice this. Then he thoroughly, who did? Did the disciples open their eyes? No, he thoroughly opened their eyes. Open up their minds to understand the scriptures what was what? Referring to him. That it's all about him. It's not a bunch of book of regulations about what you should be doing or your in your prescription in time and need. It's him. Mm-hmm. It's to inspire you to come to him. Man. Isn't that beautiful? But I already know one of the critics someone can say what about 2 Timothy 3? What about the New Testament? Well, let me tell you about some of the New Testament. New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Let's be real. It's New Testament. It's about, if you look at every single letter, look at the letters. Does not the writer inspire to talk about what Jesus did for us and what he has made us? And they end that at towards the end of the letter, we say he always spend more time talking about what? What he did. And then then he starts showing us what? What our relationship looks like outwardly. As we draw closer to him, we start forgiving one another. But it's so funny that even God knows us. He always says, oh, as Christ has forgiven you. What is he doing? He's always referring to that what Jesus has done. So you will always draw near to him. And the fruit of that. Are we ministers of reconciliation or are we ministers of beating? Huh? Condemnation. Beating. I call it the beat down. We're ministers of reconciliation. And you're like, what about the book of Acts? You know what's so beautiful about the book of Acts? We get to see the disciples raw. The apostles raw. You know what's so great about that? We get to see their relationship go deeper as we continue to read deeper, and you start to see the law, the religious, their, their work start to fall off as they grew deeper, and the work that God was working on became more powerful and more powerful as they drew closer. In a sense, it's to show us what our relationship will look like. Hence the word Acts, all written by one man, Luke, which is actually his gospel. They, we just broke it up. But it shows their journey as they drew closer and closer and closer to how their works start to fall off. And it's Christ who started to shine out. Wow. But I already know what people say. 2 Timothy 3, what about the reproof of all scripture? Look at that. Oh, open is what I get there. It just means he's opening your eyes and we can, I invite you just to go a little bit of yourself. So, 2 Timothy 3. Every scripture is God brief or inspiration. Given inspiration. Impossible for instruction, reproof, correction, for training, righteousness, so the man of God may be complete, proficient, and well fit, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And we always leave it there like, read this book so you get reproof, correction, instructions. Again, 
where scripture in the Greek always refers to the old. What's the old about? Jesus. What's it all about? It's about him. And what does that do for you? When you see him, what do you do, church? You draw closer. You start to learn. Mm -hmm. And you draw closer. As you get to know him, you're starting to, you're, you, your old starts to fall off outwardly. The new starts to begin. Reproof. Everything starts to become real to you. He begins to become real to you. As he is, so will we right now in this world. And that starts to become a reflection of that. Correction. We always think, when God uses the word correction, man, he's going to beat us. He's going to beat us with our sin, don't we? That's what we am doing. To each other, don't we? We think that's what God's doing to us. So we end doing to each other. The word correction means restoration to the upright or right state. It's restoration. Not a beat down. It's, he's restoring you. He's telling you, you do have right standing. Yeah. And you start to portray that out, outwardly. Wow. It starts to improve your life and your character. Instruction, yep, the whole training of education of, a child, of, of children. I'm keeping it simple. It's also included training and preparing the mind. He starts to guide you as his children. He starts to become your father. And you start taking your role as his son or daughter. He allowed to lead and guide you. So let's look at that again. God wrote the scriptures so that you can see what? Jesus. So that you will draw near and you will begin to walk right, talk right. He starts to become more real in your life. All this is that Paul was telling Timothy, and we see that he's sitting here. This is a letter to encourage him because Paul says, I'm leaving. Paul says, I'm leaving. Not that they're taking my life, I lay it down. I'm done. He's giving him encouragement. For him to draw the closer. He said, this is what you're going to like to look like. It's the only how, the only way it will ever happen. Timothy. And did you know he was bigger, I would say, more powerful than Paul ever was? Wow. It's almost equated as a, somebody who was ministering to over 500,000 people today. In one sitting. In one sitting. Isn't that crazy? One person. But it wasn't him. It was Daddy speaking to the Holy Spirit. And him. Coming out. And it all seemed the same. This book isn't about you and I. It's about him. Wooing us closer and closer. So that we get to know him more and more. So that he starts to help us. Is he mad when you fall? No, oh, he's like, man, let me pick you up and brush you off. Let me just love on you. You did a good job. Do you yell at a child when they're trying to take their first steps and they fall? Do you? No. What do you do? You celebrate. You pick up. Let's do it again. That's what this show is. That's what all this show is. So that we will draw closer to him. When we fall, we know he's celebrating. He's celebrating that we took a step. Mm -hmm. A step, for crying out loud. And he's helping to pick us up. So we say, pick me up, Daddy. I, allow, I, I, I want you in the race. Daddy, I, love, I know you love me. I know you have an awesome life for me. I know that you have everything that the Son has, you have given to me. And I thank you. So my, when things in the natural don't look good, I know you have me, Dad. Mm -hmm. I'm going to draw closer to you instead of running around frankly and trying to fulfill my needs myself. And I said, Daddy, just go have your way. This book is a wooing book, man.
Nah, I'm just gonna love. But we want love. I want you to encourage you today when you open this up daily. If you're not daily, then you know what? Open up when you open it. But when you open it and you start to read, allow him to reveal himself. Allow him to show you him and draw close. Are you driving down the road and you see an accident and are you looking at the Bible like, you know, you're talking to daddy, man. Yeah. <laughs> Be real. Isn't this real? Yeah. No, you're saying, daddy, help him. Mm-hmm. What can, do you want me to do anything? Instead of just talking to you. Because I, I, I feel the pain. Do you want me to come and help? Do you want me to make a phone call, daddy? What do you want? And he's probably saying, speak over. And I will give you the words to speak. Isn't that just like him? And that's confession right there. When you allow him to speak through you, and that only comes through your relationship. Not just because you read a text. I memorize texts. Does that help me? But knowing him, I pray that this now inspires you to draw closer. Who's that? I hear us. Look, she only look up. She knows there's bread here. So let's pray. Daddy, draw us closer, man. Holy Spirit, may this come true. Help us to see the sun. Help us to draw closer every day that we open this Bible up that you have given us. We know you have given us to us. You inspire them to, to show us their journey and their lives with you so that we may see you. So we may draw closer, just draw closer to you. Help us to understand that and help us to renew our minds and help us just to allow you to love one another. In Jesus' name, the church said, Amen. Amen. So, we haven't done this for a while. I, I blame Tim because can I blame somebody besides himself? So, so we, can't, we, we, like, we had to get communion almost this week and I totally forgot the whole entire week. So in the midst of our fellowship, we remember, and we got communion elements. But we didn't get just any communion elements that we always get. We got the condemned juice, and we got the hollow bread. Right? Because it's something we, we did like once a month back into December. Unfortunately, that's the first time we came. We didn't show up with it. It's okay. I'm so sorry. But... We're going to take communion. If you're at home, grab whatever you want. You can pass them out. Then. And if you can, we'll bring me an extra one. For free will Gracie. And believe me, we were sanitized hands. And we clamped them up. I wore gloves and everything. I sanitized the gloves and my hands. Everything. But you know what? Doesn't this... Doesn't this draw us closer to him? It draws us closer. This doesn't make say, well, you know what? I'm just going to go in this to try to get my healing. I'm hoping that for you. He said, do this as often so that you remember, as often as you remember, so that it will inspire you to draw close. Do you draw close with Closer to me, that you you will literally see that there is no wall. That I took the punishment, I took the beat down, I was broken and shed my blood, so that you can come home. So church, as we eat and drink today, you know as you cross that line, don't you? He says, "You come to me, you have, so I can give you what life." You know what's so funny? When we take this, we draw closer to his, to him. What happens in our life starts swinging on them good areas, all right? So I want you to draw closer to that. As we eat and drink together at the church, and just allow the life to spring into your dead areas.
I'll put it in my mouth and pour it through him. That's just me. Tim's excited because I gave him the biggest chunk. Did you get the big chunk? He loves the bread. We all love it. She did? Oh, praise Jesus. Go ahead, Larry. I'll let y'all take y'all time. I'm just going to run through just so that y'all can just continue to fellowship on stuff. As always, this is our, it's our time of our giving as they eat and drink. Is it good? Is it good, baby? She looks, she looks so tired still. It's our giving portion. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to go through this again because, I, man, I love this scripture. I love this because it shows me who? Jesus. And it shows me who I am. I, 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 I am in. No. I am. It reads, John 3, that Jesus, knowing full where that the Father had put everything to his hand, his hand, that he had come from God and was now returning to God, he took upon the servant's apron and he washed some feet. How many of y'all want to wash some feet? I know you do, David. I'm looking right at you. <laughs> we know it wasn't physical, it was spiritual. That we could serve one another. Because check this out. If Jesus has everything. So do you. Because you're a, a joint heir. You accompany him to the Father, don't you? God has placed, the Daddy has placed everything in your hand. You have everything in your hand. And you are from him. And guess what? You're going back to him. Because you have everything, you can now serve him. You can help one another. You can give hugs, kisses, ears. You can give your things, your items, your clothes, your finances to help someone. And I said this last week, and I kind of sparked something. Some good, some bad. When it comes time to give me your finances, I just want you to give whatever he leaves you to give. Nothing more, nothing less. If that amount is zero, we're good. I'm good. We're good. We're okay. Because Daddy still has it. He may not be giving it to you to give to us because we may already have it. And we're okay with that. Just give what you need. That's it. If you're at home, at home on Facebook Live, there's a link above you. Go straight to our PayPal account. You can give what you're offering. Like I said, Get wherever you leads. And that amount zero will hallelujah to you too. We love you still. We, we don't care. With that. I'm going to get my man Javen up here for this one. We wish you all a happy, wonderful day. Because we missed him last week. We really did. Because I, I, I was sitting here talking about him. I was talking about you, man. I was like, man, I don't even think I can do this anymore. Do you know when I'm going October 1st? You know you have to be in there. You got to do all this, too. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you got to send Tim down. Because even though Tim's talking, you got to do all this, too. Big shoulders, man. You got to step behind, from behind the camera from up here. You okay with that? No. Hey, that man. Do the do man. Church, have an amazing week. We with that. We love you all. And hope you all have an amazing week. And hopefully look forward to talking to every one of y'all soon. Hey.